Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm gonna to answer a subscriber's question here. So Abstract Schnitzel, uh, he has asked many questions before, and I've made videos for him. Um, but I think this is a really good question. I'm not gonna read the entire thing to you guys uh, because it was a super long question with many details. Um, I don't know, you can't see that really on my phone, but I mean, it's this really long uh, question here. Uh, the question though is really, you know, how come quant finance is so niche and how come it's not more popular? Um, essentially, you know, they looked at doing all these different types of jobs with a math major. And of course, things that came up were like data science, data analysts, actuaries, financial analysts, financial advisors, etc. And yet nobody told them there's a job called a quant. Uh, and the question's kind of going into, you know, how come, you know, basically like engineering. So why is engineering so ubiquitous compared to quant finance, especially with the exaggerated salaries of quant finance? Um, and they're kind of wanting to know, like, is there like what's going on? Why do we not talk about quantitative finance in the math world? Um, engineering has high salaries, which is why a lot of mathematicians go the engineering route. And so it would make sense that you would go into the quantitative finance route because people throw out ridiculous numbers on quant finance. And so I thought a lot about this and it's challenging and I think there are multiple factors. I'm sure I'm gonna miss a ton of these, but let me just start off with here. So we're gonna to go to the AC, which I believe is the American Society for Engineering Education. Um, according to the United States Bureau, it says on their website, I'll put a link below so you can look at this. Um, so United States Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS, there was approximately 2 million engineers in the US, 700,000 engineering technicians and technologists, and 4.1 million computational professionals in the US workforce in 2018. So quants scale very well. And I'm gonna put, there's a caveat to this, kind of. Um, but finance as a whole industry scales really well. You can have a few people with a strategy and it will scale to a specific point and then typically it dies out and you can't scale it any further. Um, but when you look at things like banks, for example, um, so one of the first banks I started at had 10,000 employees, okay? Out of 10,000 employees, uh, there were 60 people that we would consider, put in air quotes, quants, loosely considered here, but uh, model development, model validation, you had, I think, around like 60 at the time. And then I moved around and I went to a global firm and I went to a division here in the U.S., which does not cover globally. Um, but in the U.S. here, my validation team was like 31 to 32 people, and that included governance, which governance is non-quant. They just do paperwork. Um, so out of 31, 34, you might have had 20 to 25 actual validators. And then I would say uh, development is probably double to triple that size. So you might be looking at, I don't know, 60 to 100 quants plus the third 25, 20-ish. Let's just say 200 round even number. And if you go to really large firms, even like Citi, uh, JP Morgan Chase, they have a lot larger teams, like significantly larger, like they're in the hundreds. But when you start to think about this, there's also an issue, so talking about banking, um, only the super large banks and only the regional banks that are fairly large have quants. After that, they're just too expensive and most traditional finance people don't see any value in adding them. So they just manage risk the old school way like in the 80s and 90s. Um, you don't have a whole staff of people building these and I know this because I consulted, I was at the American Bankers Association conference once, this one specifically on risk management. And I was talking to this lady who ran this really tiny itty bitty bank and she's wanting me to somehow come and educate their whole staff and team on how to do credit scorecard model development. They want it just to be automated. If I could just make a series of videos for them, it'd be nice and easy and they'll do it. You know, they're only hiring undergrads. They're only paying, I think it was like 40,000 to 60,000, you know, but 60s, those are really good undergrads. And I'm just looking at her like, no. So the small banks don't have quants. This is the issue you run into. Um, there's a lot of jobs in engineering. So schools can churn out a ton of math majors, engineering students. Like every university under the sun can have a math and engineering department. In every city and county and state and you know federal, we all need buildings. And it's really hard to duplicate and scale engineering in the sense that even if you take the same blueprints for two you know, buildings. Uh, you put one here in Dallas, Texas, which sits on black clay soil. Uh, you move one up to like Washington State, where I was at. Uh, there's hard, rocky soil. Uh, the engineering is probably going to have to differ just because of how the footings are set. Uh, Texas also has the issue that when you go down so many feet, you end up running into limestone. So we can't, 
there's there's issues. Uh, there's foundational issues. Uh, but engineering is just not as scalable. And because of that, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of engineers to do all this work that's required to build everything. And it's constantly churning and there's just new stuff being built. Now, quant finance is scalable in the sense that you can have one quant that can manage $100,000 and that same quant can probably manage up to a few million dollars and use the same strategies. And, you know, the market's probably deep enough in those depending on which areas you're in, uh, that you can actually scale that to a specific point. Now, of course, you can't scale things. I mean, imagine scaling a strategy for Tesla into the trillions. Like, you're going to move the stock and then it causes issues. And, you know, there's financial reasons why you can scale to a point, but you can't just keep scaling forever. Um, and on top of that, it's just that I don't think there's that many jobs. And so when you have educational systems as well, so talking about age here, engineering and math is really, really old. That's really old. Financial engineering is probably the first quants, I would argue, are probably late 70s at the earliest. Um, and then you have like the 80s. And then real quant finance hasn't really taken off until probably the 2000s. So you think about, let's just say the year 2000 here. Um, it's 23 years old. Uh, math and engineering is thousands of years old. Like I was watching a video recently on you know, talking about some math theorems, and it was like 3,000 years old. So Financial engineering is very, very new. This is one another reason why no one's heard of it. There's not a lot of jobs. It's super new. Um, also, most of you are probably really young that are watching this. So when I went through like you know junior high and even partway through high school, I didn't have a cell phone. Uh, when I grew up as a kid, I think we had like ni Windows ninety five, and you know the modem and the cool sound and like we didn't use the internet for things. I'm still not a massive fan of technology, which shocks a lot of people, but it's due to my age somewhat, I didn't, you know, I wasn't born and growing up with Facebook and, you know, MySpace, if any of you knows what MySpace is. Uh, those things just weren't around. So computers, computer technology, the internet, all this wasn't present when I was a kid, when I was growing up. Um, even when I was starting off into my college years, like high frequency trading was this really big deal. And it was like really starting to take off. And like, you know, it's starting to take hold here back in, um, probably like 2007, 2000. So I came out of high school, I think around then, um, during 2007. So I was like right, right in that period where the financial crash hit. Computers have not been that advanced for very long. We're still just right at the cutting edge of this stuff. Like it's not a very popular field to be done. Uh, the other piece of this on top of it, I think is probably just the distaste for business. I don't, I don't, I don't hold any grudges against the engineering and math communities. Um, quants aren't treated very well in many firms. Uh, the business people, the business mentality, the training, the MBA is, you are so great. You are just an amazing person. You have an MBA. You went to this program. You know, you're really somebody. I mean, I was talking to somebody who had their MBA and they're like going on about, well, my professor, you know, they worked at this firm and they're like telling me and I'm like, yeah, they were a vice president. They were a dime a dozen. Like, I was past that at, I don't know, the age of like 28 or something. Like your 50 year old professor that barely made it to that point at the age of like 45 and went back into teaching. Like the business side, just it's not very nice and fun to work with. They kind of look down on everybody. They don't really appreciate the mathematics. And so finding people in the quantitative finance community, which is another problem with this, they do not like to communicate. They don't like to work with a lot of people. I am one of these crazy people. I push myself into doing YouTube and going to conferences and talking to all these people. And I seem really happy and chipper and like really extroverted. Uh, the truth is I'd rather just be like alone working on a long, complicated problem, digging through math theorems and figuring out why, you know, I can't solve something. Like I'm not looking to go out there. Well, I am, but most quants aren't out there looking to find, you know, undergrads to teach and train and educate. And on top of that, this is a problem I have seen with the master's programs as well. So the master's programs in quantitative finance around the United States here, they've been talking to me and they've mentioned the same issue. Like they really want, you know, smart, well-educated and trained people in the STEM fields to go into quantitative finance for their master's program. So they want to have more depth. Um, a lot of these programs too want to get away from hiring as many or bringing in as many Indians and Chinese and, um, predominantly those two groups, but bringing in a lot of internationals to do quantitative finance. Uh, the industry is kind of talking about, you know, be nice to have some Americans doing it, you know, and people like Dimitri keep saying they don't exist and the industry agrees and we just don't know how to get Americans to do that. And some programs started waiving application fees and surprise, surprise, 
not many Americans apply. Uh, and when I say that, I mean, there's a bunch of finance students applying, which are not qualified typically because they don't have the math background. Um, but the math schools don't even know about it. Like your professors don't even know it exists. And again, it's just because I don't think there's a lot of jobs in this area. And also when professors line up, go online and they realize like salaries are a million dollars plus to start. Uh, yes, their BS indicators going off. They know this is a lie. And so I think a lot of them just kind of turn away and don't want to deal with it. Why would I, you know, talk to these, I don't know, slimy, sleazy business people, um, and then try to put math students there. It just seems distasteful. Um, but the programs, the undergrad programs, I do wish I could go talk to more undergrad programs, the math departments, the engineering departments. Like, if you like what you've done, you like the engineering, you like the math, but you really don't want to be an engineer, like this is a perfect opportunity for you. We're going to be using calculus. We're going to be using real analysis. We're gonna be using probability theory and statistics and some programming, of course. And so I think it's an amazing fit for math students. Um, but I think part of it too with the math departments is they don't know what skills are needed and there's not a lot of communication between these master's programs and these math undergrads. And I know a few of them, at least one of them, uh, which I have rated because they've done a great job on trying to bring in um, a diverse background of people that are super qualified and that are already here in the US. Uh, they've been working with undergrads trying to find where's that next top talent and how do you get those schools and universities you know, education programs and get them excited about it. I wish I had the funding, the money to do this. I don't. I don't have the funding and the money to travel across the US. Um, my little tiny YouTube channel does not make enough funds uh, for me to travel to a bunch of like, I would love to go to my undergrad university and just talk to them and say, you know, this is a great opportunity. This is where it's at. Or even go to like high schools and things and explain like, you know, this is an amazing opportunity for those that like math and stats and, you know, computer programming. This is a great area to be in. Um, but I think the reason we see such a slant towards engineering is there's a lot of opportunity. There's also a lot of types of engineering. So, you know, electrical, uh, don't test me here, mechanical, I mean, hydraulics. Like I had a, a friend at Michigan who was studying uh, naval engineering and it was talking about waves and how water interacts with ships and the types of the bow on the ship and the shape and how it moves. And Anyways, there's all kinds of cool things in engineering. Quant finance though, I think we've done an absolute terrible job at marketing. It's why me, poor old me on here on YouTube, I can yell and scream and talk and I'm the largest channel just because there's not that many people in it. Um, the other issue too, I think, is that we all focus on the buy side, like investing, hedge funds. Like again, most quants probably are more on my thinking pattern here that just sounds like sleazy and dirty and not productive for society, uh, where there's a whole sell side of people actually generate products like loans for mortgages, auto, and people vastly oversimplified on the internet and say like, oh, you just do ABC and this gives you a loan, but they don't see it. And I'm working as I'm trying, I'm trying. There's been a bunch of requests lately. I'm trying to figure out how to show you guys um, some of the modeling pieces more so, so you understand what we're doing and how the analytics, so we actually do some analytics with this, how the analytics ties into the modeling, ties into the decision-making, because I get to do a lot of this stuff now in my, my actual job. Um, but that's why, I think that's why it's so just unheard of. I wish there were more math majors. Like I wish more math majors would apply and do it. Um, but at the same time, I wish the master's programs in the industry would reach backwards into them and explain more exciting and fun and interesting things, um, especially above and beyond the prop trading dream job that everyone keeps, you know, over hyping and talking about. The, the money's good, um, but typically math majors that just do it for the money are never that great. Um, I ran into a math PhD at Princeton. Excites me because the, the topics are just so good and it's like I can have a real conversation. Uh, if these individuals were out applying for jobs, and you know they were a little more educated on the industry themselves because they were asking me specifically how do these topics connect. Uh, if that was more clear between the math side and the quant finance side, because big surprise, most people hiring quants aren't quants, uh, then you would have something. You would really have a great in-depth um, industry here, I think. So I think there needs to be a lot of work in this area. I don't know why it's not happening. I've been excited lately just because I've seen more Americans in general on my channel, but more specifically, I've been seeing a lot of high school students, which just like blows my mind because I had no idea what I really wanted to do in the high school. And then it took me years going through fi uh, my undergrad and failing miserably of picking a finance degree and then finally realizing I want to do something meaningful. I want to do math and stats. So 
Anyways, that's my two cents. That's why I think so many math majors go into engineering and why it's so unheard of. I don't even think the universities know about it. The career placement advisors don't know about it. It is such a top secret, weird area to work in. And most of us are super quiet. I've had complaints from subscribers of like, I've emailed like 25, 30 people on LinkedIn and no one responded. Like, thank you for responding. And I'm like, oh, I actually have a whole YouTube channel. Check me out. Put my little marketing in there. Uh, but yeah, it's great. So I hope more math majors will do it. If you're a math major, feel free to reach out and ask me questions. I'm happy to make videos on this as well because the questions you have, many other math students probably have, but I just don't think about them because I'm not a math student. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.